Hey there everybody, welcome back to Starting Out Solitary, this is week 255, Blind Rob here and I'm subbing in for Corvus once again. This week we're talking about which major arcana cards from the tarot represent our practice or our path in this moment, or at this point of time. Now, when I, uh, excuse me, when I uh, first heard <laughs> first heard that we were doing this topic this week and then found out that I was going to be subbing in for Corvus. My first thought and instinct was to say, no, I'm not going to bother, you know, going with this, this theme and, and talking about, you know, which major arcana cards represent my practice uh, here in the now. Uh, mainly because I'm not a fan of tarot. Tarot is not something I practice. It's not part of my practice whatsoever for multiple different reasons that has nothing to do with, you know, today's video. Outside of the fact that we're talking about major arcana cards, which are tarot cards. But anyway, that's <laughs> neither here nor there. And honestly... I just thought for a, for a few moments when I thought about making this video, I, or when I got ready to, well, when I got into the sort of the mindset of thinking how I was going to do this video before I started recording this video, I thought to myself, maybe I'll just do which feta from Ohm that represents my practice in the here and now, or which runes from the Elder Futhark runes represents my practice in the here and now. However, considering the fact that it's just major arcana that we were asked to talk about that represents our practice in the here and now, I decided to just, you know, suck it up, um, do it anyway. However, if uh, the minor arcana, arcana was, was involved, I would have said, no, forget it, and just go with my alternative plan of talking about which runes, which feta, or characters from either uh, the runes or ohm that represents my practice in the here and now instead. <laughs> so, um, seeing how tarot is not something that I practice, it's not part of my practice whatsoever, I know very little outside of the, the bare bones minimum basics about tarot. So I actually had to take about an hour before I started recording this video just so that I can look up the meanings to, to think to myself, well, the, this card, this card, this card, this card represents my, my practice in the here and now. <laughs> and honestly, I can't say that there's just one card represents my practice or symbolizes my practice at this point. Um, where to begin? I'm probably going to say these out of order. And please forgive me if I say the names of these cards incorrectly or do not exactly get their their names, you know, all that correct. I'll do the best I can. But like I said, uh, I know I've said this before, but it's tarot's not part of my practice. I know very little about tarot. And yeah, but anyway, so some of the cards from the major arcana that can represent my practice at this point in time, well, there's a number of them. Um, the death card, for one thing. Uh, the death card has been could, has been representing a, an aspect of my practice for the past couple of years. I got out of heathenry, Norse heathenry, uh, specifically Alsatru, back, in, back at the end of 2014, beginning of 2015, and there was a lot of betrayal by a few of the deities that I was very close to at that point. Uh, Frigga, Thor, Odin, or Odin. Um, and uh, that was just a pain. And, I, and for a while, I was grieving the relationships that I lost and the fact that I had to give up such an important aspect of my practice because uh, Norse heathenry was about half of my practice. You know, I practiced both Irish and Norse heathenry. And it would take me a couple years since then, excuse me, before I could get back into heathenry, even though now I do it from a worker true side, work, a worker true perspective, which is, you know, worshiping the worker or the uh, Yurtner, Yurtnar uh, gods, such as Loki and, his, and the majority of his family. Um, but... Yeah, uh, death, definitely um, having to let go 
of things. Not letting go as, you know, let them be as they be, but or they may, but letting go as, you know, these things, I, I cannot be, I cannot do this anymore. I cannot be connected to these deities. I cannot um, worship these deities. I cannot have a relationship with these, with these deities. Um, I have to cut them out of my life. And it's a process that I'm still in the... Um, even now I'm in the process of healing from. Even now I'm in the process working through mending myself. Um, coming out coming out of it just as strong as I, as I was when I first got into Heathenry. Specifically Alice of Tree back in 2011. Other, some other cards. Um, temperance. Temperance is another card. Uh, one of the meanings that I saw when I looked up the meaning for temperance is balance. And it's right now I'm in the process of finding the balance between Irish heathenry and Norse heathenry between Rurker True and um, Jetliok. And it's, um, it's, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, Breach has always been my primary deity. She always will be, but it's just finding, you know, finding a good balance because I know that even though I'm, I'm now in really, I'm now, I now have relationships with deities, um, who are a lot better, who respect me and my boundaries. Um, as far as my, my relationship with breach as, uh, she has, she always has to come first and foremost. And that was part of the thing that kind of ruined Alcatraz for me was, a number of the Aesir refused to honor those boundaries to the point that Frigga tried to take over Breach's place in my life. Um, and but it's finding a balance between the two side, the two halves of my spirituality. Um, but not only that, but finding a balance between uh, my bardic, my ecstatic, oracular poetic practice of filioc um w along with you know fairy witchcraft and by fairy witchcraft i'm referring to irish uh, magic irish witchcraft uh focusing on the ishi the fair folk but also balancing that with uh with golder and seda or Seth from uh from norse heathenry and is just keeping those balance in you know in my practice, and also keeping the balance between the relationships with my deities, with the de with the relationships with my uh, my fairy my fairy companions, um, you know my companions in, in general. So yeah, that's very much a um, a uh, a huge thing for me. Um, I have to say, out of all the out of all the major Arcana cards, uh, the one that I have come to realize represents my life or my life path is very much uh, a comp. Well, there's two actually: the Hanged Man and the Hierophant. And the Hanged Man, like for the past uh, fourteen years now, I've more or less known that. My life is to be a spiritual one, and it is very much uh, to be to be dedicated to devotion, to serving, serving deities, serving community, um, and whatever form that may take, and whatever role you know I end up doing. So, um, be it diviner, be it um, you know magician, bard, witch, what have you. And where the hanged man comes into it is. When you get deep, deep enough down the rabbit hole with relationships with deities, you realize that you can't just do anything and everything that you want. There are, there are rules, guidelines, you know, boundaries of your spiritual traditions, your spiritual your practices, your faiths, but also individual personal rules, boundaries that... Um, your deity set before you and to break them is to you know is to court disaster is to court you know is to break taboo um is to bring tragedy upon yourself in some ways um for me it's figuring out you know where i am it's like my deities my guides they're they don't lead me every aspect through every aspect of my life 
but they le- they they definitely have command of in charge of direction of the the biggest aspects the majority of at- things of the most important parts of and everything else surrounding it uh, entwining it kind of follows along and those things that do not help honor do not help improve upon do not help you know <laughs> open the path and make it easier and more efficient for me to do what I need to do to, uh, you know, to honor where, where it is my deities, my guides are taking me and what they want me to do. Um, they have no place in my life and they sort of get, you know, tossed to the side, so to speak. And along the way, I've, unfortunately, I've, I've found that there have been a couple people here and there that I've had to let go because, as much as I care about them, ultimately, uh, things just did not work out, and it's it's not it's it's not for the betterment of where I'm supposed to be. Uh, Hierophant, a large part where the Hierophant is, is for the past few years, uh, my deity, especially Breeze, has been nudging me, prodding me, poking me to get some training, you know, to t- you know to be able to eventually serve community in a more serious more official sort of role so i've started taking this year i've started taking my uh studies with the dedicant path of andriac fane a little bit serious as it's the first step of in the on the road of getting of any, getting any kind of like act, like further training in adf but i've also started taking the first steps of training with the troth um which is a norse heathen uh or the uh, church slash organization um and hope to one day you know a few years down the road you know get somewhere with it training i've also taken up and finishing the bardic course of the order of bards of its and druids um which i started years and years ago but for various reasons had to had to stop had to give it up for a while and yeah, it's it's interesting, and the more that I find that I honor these two cards that definitely make up my life path. Um, there's also a third major arcana card that is in my life path, but it's le- but it's not it's not completely as tied to spirituality or my practice as the hierophant and the hangman is. But that's the lovers, and that's more my part of my life path as my being and how i see the world and how i see people and how i you know how i see things is through relationships so my practice my spirituality is very much i'm very much a devotional polytheist basically first and foremost like every everything that i do like all all the the beings that i work with i have a relationship with that are in my life i see my practice with them to them in the lens of a relationship of be a working relationship mentor mentee relationship apprentice relationship family relationship what have you um but that's not entirely tied to spirituality as the other two are um the nah i can't even speak the other main card major arcana card i can think of that can definitely identify or represent my practice now is the strength card uh, like I mentioned, some stuff happened in the end of 2014, beginning of 2015, and I was spiritually wounded. A lot of my abilities to, you know, for prophecy, for seership, for divination, for oracular ecstatic trance was damaged. Um, and a lot of my, my own personal spiritual strength was, was taken away. It was It was cut in half was laid low um and i'm in the process i'm in the well i won't say beginning stages i'd say i'm probably like in the moderate stages um starting to work up to fast you know not quite full steam ahead but getting there slowly uh, regaining everything that i once had at the level where it was and improving upon it strengthening it and so excuse me, everything that I do personally uh, 
for you know especially 2020 the work the work that they've been doing for the last half of 2019 and all of 2020 is very much excuse me to get myself back to where I was before everything happened in two th the end of 2014 but it's also to give me to a place where I can you know walk forward head high you know uh, the in the best sort of, I guess you could say spiritual health uh, and vitality that you know I can be one last card that I can think of uh, and I almost forgot it's the hermit card for the past few years um, yeah my, my pra and it's not to say you know that I you know try to ignore people try to dodge people or dodge like I said you know my life is very, I see things for relationships so I would not be able to do that even if I wanted to but in some aspects I'm very private about my practice and especially the past few years, I've had to go into my cave, my spiritual cave, so to speak, to heal, to tend to my wounds, uh, to heal, to uh, find my strength again. Um, it's it's through personal isolation, personal hibernation, personal um, reflection that I am able to to find the pieces that you know were taken away from me that were damaged um to rebuild myself so to speak to to you know to to tend to those wounds to uh to exercise spiritually and um i'm not sure how long excuse me how long the hermit card will be prevalent to my practice it could be for the rest of the year it could be for the next couple years i have no idea but there are a few select people that I let into the inner sanctum of my practice. They know almost as much as everything that I'm willing to share, if not everything that you know I know that I am, that I do, I share with them. But I'm very picky about who I let in. And uh, yeah, those are basically the cards that, as far as I can think of, represent you know my practice either here in the now or they have been representing my practice in the past a little while and will probably continue to do so for the next little while like i said could be the next month could be the next this full day for the rest of this year could be for the next year or so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video please let me know down below in the comment section how you felt what you thought or what you thought until next time, where I'm able to sub in for someone here on Starting Up Solitary, may Bridge bless.